Namaste, Sitaram, a pleasant good morning. Welcome to Rudraya. I am your host, Nisha Sharma, and Rudraya is being brought to you with the kind compliments of Maha Rujadev Mandir. And of course, our Mandir is located at 850 Tapscott Road, Unit 34 in Scarborough, with Tapscott and McNichol being our closest intersection. So today's program is a very special program. We want to dedicate it to our dear daughter, Ravisha Sharma, as she celebrates her 18th birthday this weekend. So Ravisha, on behalf of Maharajadev Mandir, the crew at Rajaya, your father, myself, your brother, your sister, your grandmothers, your, your aunts, everyone, we want to wish you a happy, happy birthday and welcome to adulthood. Without further ado, we'll join our spiritual leader for our Parvachan, Pandit Ravi Prasad Sharma. Shri concept of life and death is very different from that of Abrahamic religions, which have floated the expression rest in peace, RIP, rest in peace. Many Abrahamic religions have the concept of only one life and henceforth an afterlife or heaven, which they label as peace. That is why they use the expression rest in peace. Now, we are not an Abraham uh, religion. What should Hindus say? Said the Gati. Because this is not so in Hinduism. There's an important, important reason why. And without understanding this core Hindu tenet, Hindus continue to say rest in peace mindlessly. Not realizing that what they are saying is in no way given a rest or peace to anyone. That is just a change of clothes. And all major Hindu sacred texts, including Bhagavad Gita, Katupanishad, Shiva Agamas, Puranas, they reiterate that as per the cosmic law, the Jiva Atma or the individual consciousness cannot be destroyed. It's a reflection of the cosmic consciousness or Paramatma. It is bound by karma and maya and continues its journey from one janma to another towards final liberation, jivana mukti, living a liberated life of moksha, emancipation from the cycle of birth, and death. When it merges back into the cosmic consciousness, 
The cosmic consciousness manifests as many jivas to celebrate itself. Ekoham bahushyam, as said in the Vedas Upanishad. On the path, it gets deluded and forgets this and starts having suffering. This is the bondage that it needs to free itself from. So death is like a change of clothes for the Jiva Atma. It travels from one body and mind to another and continues its journey. It has the same circumstances and resources it had in its previous life, in the next life as well. Vasansi Jirnani Yata Vihaya Navani Garhanani Naru Aparani Tata Shari Rani Vihaya Jirnani Sanyani Navani Dehi Bhagavad Gita Chapter 2 Verse 22 tells us just like people shed worn out clothes and wear new ones. Likewise, it casts off its worn out body and enters a new one. The jiva does not lose anything by leaving one body and going to the next. Its karma is also transferred from the previous body and mind to the next. Depending on how evolved the jiva was and how dharmic a life he or she spent. The jiva going through a lot or not suffering by leaving the body. But it cannot be assessed by medical science as it is not equivalent to pain in the medical terms. When the jiva is leaving one when the jiva is leaving one body, one's body, it goes through the powerful experiences of that janma once again. This decides how easy or how difficult the passage would be for the jiva. So why Sadgati and not RIP, rest in peace. When you say Om Sadagati, Ramnam Satya, you are praying towards the divine to guide this Jeev Atma towards a higher consciousness in its next birth. Whatever karma can be destroyed for the Jeeva by performing the last rites I perform and praying for Purnatva. For a jiva, it should be liberated from that. This is what Om Sadagati implies. That is also why Bhagavad Gita, chapter 14, Katu Upanishad, they are chanted after someone leaves this body. So as to remind the jiva of its true nitya, which is that, which is divine. These texts reveal the most important truths about life and death and the true nitya, the Jiva Atma and the Paramatma. The more the Jiva Atma, the Jiva remembers that it is divine, the better next Janma he or she can get. One life theory is the biggest bondage. And if a Jiva believes that it has only one life to live, it remains stuck in that limbo for a long time. It believes it will get the best there is only by not assuming the next body because that is what it has been told. So it does not want to assume another body at all. It does not assume the next body and remains in a state of preta, state of spirithood. Hence, when you wish someone Rest in peace. You are basically implying that they should remain stuck in that state. If you are Hindu, this is a no way wishing someone a good passage. Om Namo Bhagavate Val Sudevaya. Sam Samundar Extra Staffing Solutions. Sam and his team have been providing quality temporary staffing to various companies throughout the GTA since 2001. We have competitive rates, we take care of all your recruitment needs and payroll cost, 
and we provide transportation. Our friendly and knowledgeable recruiters are here to assist you, whether you are looking for permanent or temporary employees, for industrial or office needs. So call us now at 647-693-7745 or visit our website at www.extrastaffing.ca. My dear viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this morning's Pravachan. As Pandit Ravi, week after week, he diligently prepares a new topic to bring some comfort and enlightenment to you. And of course, as we go through this COVID-19 and we do a lot of self-reflection because we are blessed with all this precious time, I do also hope that you can find it deep in your heart to forgive those who have wronged you, um, you know, and, and understand that life is so more precious than holding grudges. And today, Dr. Sachin has a very important uh, presentation uh, on, on stress. As I know, during this time, our stress level has heightened and we are so much um, afraid or fear of what the future brings, even if we say that we're going back to normal. What does normal look like? So I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Sachin Ramkisun on a segment on stress. Sitaram and welcome to Health Corner. I am Dr. Sachin Ramkasun, and today we begin an important series on mental health. In this six-part series, we will explore the various types of mental health disorders that are so common in our community. We will also discuss the stigma that continues to surround mental illness. At the end of this series, we hope that everyone has a better understanding of how common mental illness is some of the various types of mental illnesses, and how we can address these illnesses in ourselves or those around us. Today, we will begin with an overview of mental illness. Mental health disorders include a number of conditions that involve disturbances in thinking, emotion, or behavior. We all have small disturbances in thinking, emotions, and behaviors on a daily basis. But when these disturbances cause significant distress or start to interfere with daily life, then they are considered mental illness or a mental health disorder. The effects of mental illness may be long-lasting or it may be temporary. Nearly 50% of adults experience mental illness at some point in their life. This is one in every two people which highlights how common mental illness actually is. Four of the 10 leading causes of disability are due to mental illness. In fact, depression is the number one cause of disability out of all illnesses, mental or physical. Despite this high prevalence of mental illness, only about 20% of people who have a mental illness receive professional help. Although tremendous advances have been made in the understanding and treatment of mental illness, there is still a negative stigma surrounding it. For example, people with mental illness may be blamed for their illness or viewed as irresponsible or weak. Mental illness may be seen as less real or less legitimate as compared to physical illness. This stigma is seen in the general public but especially so amongst the South Asian and West Indian communities. Hopefully through education, compassion, and personal experience, this stigma can be eliminated from mental illness. It is not always easy to differentiate mental illness from normal behavior. For example, distinguishing normal bereavement from depression when a loved one passes away may be difficult since both involve sadness and depressed mood. Similarly, differentiating anxiety disorder from regular stress and anxiety of daily life can be difficult. The dividing line between mentally healthy and mentally ill is based on how severe the symptoms are, how long the symptoms last, and how much the symptoms affect the ability to function in daily life. Mental illness is thought to be a combination of genetics, environmental factors, social factors, and psychological factors. Since genetic plays a part, 
Many of the mental health disorders have a hereditary component, meaning that those with a family history may be more likely to develop it themselves. Through extensive research, it was discovered that many mental illnesses have physical changes in the brain, such as excess neurotransmitters in schizophrenia or decreased neurotransmitters in depression. This has led to many new treatments for mental illness that did not exist before. In the recent decades, those with mental illnesses have been encouraged to integrate with society as functioning individuals, instead of being isolated and shunned as they have in the past. This overview is an introduction to a number of specific illnesses that we will explore in the coming weeks. I hope you will continue to join me on this important series on mental illness as it is one of our most important topics to date. Thank you for joining me on Health Corner and I look forward to speaking with you next week on Rudraya. Sam Samunder Extra Staffing Solutions. Sam and his team have been providing quality temporary staffing to various companies throughout the GTA since 2001. We have competitive rates, we take care of all your recruitment needs and payroll cost, and we provide transportation. Our friendly and knowledgeable recruiters are here to assist you whether you are looking for permanent or temporary employees for industrial or office needs. So call us now at 647-693-7745 or visit our website at www.extrastaffing.ca. My dear viewers, we are at the corporate segment of Rudraya and of course, Kamalji is also open to any type of suggestions you have in terms of presentations from him, the topics that you would like to hear. Please feel free to send in your emails or your request and we will be sure to cover those topics. So I'd like to introduce you to Kamalji from Lotus Funeral Home. Sitram and Namaste. My name is Kamal Bardwaj, and I'm the owner of Lotus Funeral and Cremation Center in Toronto and Kitchener Funeral Homes and Crematorium in Kitchener. I'm also a licensed funeral director. Shopping for grave markers can be overwhelming, but what is a grave marker? Grave marker, headstone, and gravestone are often used interchangeably. All these refer to any type of memorial stone that is placed on a grave. Cemeteries often use the word monument that refers to an upright stone on the grave. Markers generally refer to stones that lie flat on the ground next to the grave. There is a wide range of styles, colors, and materials available for these markers and monuments. Remember, a monument or marker does not have to be purchased right away by a family if they're doing a burial. Very often the family waits until spring or summer weather before making choices. Having the option of making choices when selecting color styles and material is a good thing. It allows you to create a memorial that truly reflects the personality of the deceased and expresses the impact he or she made on the lives of those who knew and cared about them. At Lotus Funeral and Cremation Center and at Kitchener Funeral Homes and Crematorium, we operate seven days a week and 24 hours a day. Our crematorium is located in our building, so we never have to leave our building in cold or bad weather for a cremation. Our crematorium space can have a large group of people to attend the witnessing of the cremation as well. For Hindu families, we can provide all the puja items, including fresh leaves and a haven kund. Kirtan groups can be organized by Lotus, including supplying all the instruments. We have large halls that can accommodate 500 seating to smaller ones. We are centrally located for families in the west and for families from the east. For more information, please contact me from the telephone number on your screen. Thank you for watching. And see you next week on Rudraya. Sitaram. But death is inevitable. I realized this when my dad passed away. So much pain and amidst all this, the worry of arranging a funeral. Thankfully, in all this, Kamal stood by me. From the viewing to the cremation, he arranged it all at one location. Once someone is gone, they don't come back. But Lotus Funeral Home knows how to give them a respectable farewell. Lotus Funeral Home. Life must be celebrated.
Tonight, 
right, viewers, we've come to the end of another segment of Rajaya. As I mentioned at the beginning of Rajaya, this entire program is dedicated to our dear daughter, Ravisha Sharma, as she celebrates her 18th birthday. And we would also like to say how proud we are of Ravisha. For those of you who know Ravisha, you would know of what a blessed child she is. Um, you know, she is versed in singing Indian classical music, playing the harmonium, playing the tabla, one of the first girls ever to be versed in tabla playing. And of course, she's finishing up her high school and she has been accepted to with uh, the University of Toronto, St. George campus, St. George's campus, where she's going to be starting in September. So we want to say how proud we are of Ravisha and I know the extended family, you and her family at Maharajadev Mandir, as well as Rudraya, feels the same love uh, towards Ravisha and you also want to share your best wishes to her. So Ravisha, on behalf of everyone, we want to wish you a happy birthday and may Hanumanji shower his choicest blessings upon you always. Would like to thank our kind sponsors at Maharujadev Mandir, as well as our executive producer, Gari Khan, for making Rudra possible. And today in the program, I did say that when you're spending some time self-reflecting, that you should also look at those people who you have to forgive. Uh, because when you, you know, when you can't forgive someone, pray for them. It may not change them, but it will always change you. So remember that. Until we, see, until we see each other right here on Rudraya next week, I want to say please stay safe, stay home, have a blessed week. Namaste. It's my honor than the Visha.